This is KC Blitz. Hello, everybody, and welcome to KC Blitz pregame. I'm Dan Lucy alongside of Matt Vereen, and for the next 30 minutes, we're going to get you ready for tonight's preseason kickoff between the Chiefs and the Steelers. First, Dan, let's look back at last week's preseason opener against the Bengals. Plenty of new storylines in this game, including our first glance at the new drum deck at Arrowhead, but the biggest offseason changes have come on defense under new coordinator Steve Spagnolo. Opening drive, Andy Dalton for the Bengals looking toward the end zone. Rashad Breeland was beat on the route, but he worked back to break it up, keeping us scoreless in the game, but not for long. Just a few plays later, they turn to Travion Williams on the goal line. He punches it in from one out. Bengals open the game with a 14-play, 75-yard touchdown drive, including three third-down conversions. So the defense still needing some work. What about the MVP? Well, first drive, first play for Pat. And he is in mid-season form. Patrick Mahomes hits Travis Kelsey for 33 yards out of the gate. They work their way all the way down to the goal line. Mahomes here going to decide to take it himself. Scrambling out of the pocket toward the right sideline. Fakes to get inside. Can reach for the end zone, but opts for the slide. Much to the Chief Kingdom relief. Even shooting a smile and a thumbs up to the coaches. See, Andy, I did good, right? Let Carlos Hyde finish the job. He punches it in to tie the game. That did it for Mahomes. One drive, 4-4 four four passing, 66 total. Yards. Now, besides Mahomes and defense, third big storyline was rookies. McCole Hardman continuing to stand out here. The shuffle pass from Kyle Shermer and the speedy Georgia alum does the rest. 17 yards to the house and a well deserved nap in the end zone as the Chiefs dominate 38 to 17. Now, one guy that you didn't see in those highlights was running back Darwin Thompson. He had a big second half against the Bengals. The Tulsa native has opened some eyes in St. Joe. Chiefs running back Darwin Thompson stands tall at 5 foot 8. That may seem tiny for NFL standards, but Thompson has proved his worth since arriving in camp nearly a month ago. I got to make up for my size somewhere, and that's the weight room. I mean, every day, day in, day out, I spend time in the weight room knowing that I'm only 5 8. So I got, I got to build my base, my core, my strength, and uh, it shows on the field. It certainly showed in the Chiefs' first exhibition game. Back foot, and it's Thompson into some space. And he'll take it for six. Touchdown, Chiefs. Thompson caught this pass and scampered 29 yards for a touchdown. He ended up rushing for 51 yards and scoring the TD. And Thompson says his dedication to the weight room has a direct result on the gridiron. I've gained a lot more muscle. I'm actually 190 right now. In college, I played around like 200, 205. I'm 190 right now, and I move a lot faster. And I'm more flexible. I can do a lot more things. The fleet-footed running back took a unique path to the NFL. He played high school ball at Jenks in Tulsa, and after playing JUCO ball, Thompson found himself in Logan, Utah, playing for the Utah State Aggies. He played only one season, rushing for a little over 1,000 yards and scoring 16 touchdowns. He left the Aggies early, and the Chiefs grabbed him with their second pick in the sixth round. Nothing before this really matters now. It's, it's the, the beginning. This is the beginning of the journey. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a new identity I can create. I mean, they're only going to remember me now from what I did in the NFL, not so much of what I did in college. I only played one year of D1 football. I played all the JUCO, so my name before this really didn't mean anything. I get a chance to prove myself and prove my worth at this level. The D train has always loved football. His uncle, David Thompson, played at Oklahoma State and was a St. Louis Ram. Family is Thompson's foundation. All my life has been family faith football. His new family now wears red and gold, and running back coach Dylan McCullough runs the show. He fired up all the time. He's a great coach. Uh, he's coached a lot of great backs at the college level, this level, uh, and he, he's really breaking the game down into our turn for us to understand. I mean, the guy's strong, got a great base. Um, again, he got some stature issues, but once he get up inside, that's where his strengths are once he get his hands on you. Well, I like that he's a strong runner, got a great center of gravity. Um, he's a guy that can get skinny and get up through some holes too. Um, but more importantly, I mean, he's done some things that warrant that opportunity to get some reps with the ones, and we'll just keep building on it. That is something the Kansas City Chiefs would love to have on display Sundays at Arrowhead Stadium. No, you're not in college no more. This is not a scholarship. This is an everyday job. I mean, you go from, what, 8, 7 in the morning to 10 at night. I mean, it's an everyday job. A great opportunity. I actually have a great football program, and, you know, uh, my biggest job is to come here, you know, be a leader. Coming up next, we'll take a look at how the Honey Badger is leading the new look defense.
Welcome back. After last season, Chiefs Kingdom was screaming for changes. Not a single fan wanted to see this stellar offense go to waste because of the other side of the ball. So when it came to defensive free agents, Kansas City made sure to answer the call. The Romans had a saying, Vox Populi, Vox Dei. The voice of the people is the voice of God. And this offseason, that voice asked one thing of Chiefs general manager Brett Veach. Fix the defense. Yeah, well, I think we're just, you know, we, we want to take the next step. And, um, you know, certainly it, it goes without saying our offense was uh, pretty efficient last year. And, and, you know, I think we just were always looking to improve and get better. And, and you know, um, uh, we felt change was, was best on that side of things. So Kansas City answered the voice of the people with some major names. Frank Clark on the line, Steve Spagnola with the helm, and Juan Thornhill from the draft. But arguably the biggest name came from the free agency pool. A great opportunity. I obviously have a great football program, and you know uh, my biggest job is to come here, you know, be a leader, try to make uh, plays on and off the football field, and you know put my hand in the pile and you know help us win some games. Tyron Matthew, the Honey Badger, a name he's embraced, signifying his tenacious play style and a distinct absence of weakness. We're excited about about Tyron, and and one of the things that was really interesting um, when we started this free agency process with Coach Spagnola was uh, I remember him coming down to the office after we gave him a list of safeties to watch. And he would go down the list and he would say strengths and weaknesses and I like this guy and this and that. Here, here's what he can do, here's what he can't do. And he got to Ty and he said, I, I, I'm struggling to find out what he can't do. And I said, Coach, say, say, no, say no more, we're going to get him. But while the Badgers' bravado is beloved, it has yet to manifest in a permanent home. After a Heisman finalist career at LSU, he was drafted by the Cardinals in the third round of 2013, released in 2017, signed to Houston in 2018 for a year, and then let free. A long journey that now brings him to Arrowhead and hopes he's finally found his forever home. And I wanted to come to a team um, that, that um, you know, obviously had great talent, great core players. A lot of their core players are still young, uh, closer to my age, and so I think that had a lot to do with the decision as well. And, you know, anytime you can play for an organization you know, with great history. And while he only played two snaps last Saturday against the Bengals, the ball practically gravitated to him on a fumble later reversed to incomplete. Now nah, it's been fun. Uh, you know, I couldn't wait to get in front of the fans and, you know, make a couple plays. Uh, I only played a couple plays, so I couldn't really get into it, but um, I'm just trying to cheer on my teammates, keep everybody focused, and make sure the young guys stay ready. But his impact was felt early in Arrowhead, just as it's been all camp. The most instinctive guy on that back end is Tyron Matthew. And so if you watch him, he does things instinctively. And if his coach is right, the honey badger, or Milivora Capensis, as the Latins call him, might be exactly what the Vox Populi ordered. Should. Is this the best outfit you've ever had? Coming up on the Blitz, Demarcus Robinson shows us how to fly, and Anthony Sherman comes to training camp in his latest fashion choice. That's all next. During our Casey Blitz pregame shows, we've been putting the spotlight on episodes from the Kansas City Chiefs production called The Franchise. Now here's a look at what wide receiver Demarcus Robinson did before training camp started. Ready for this? I think so. Pretty gonna, nervous. It's going to be a good time. We'll take you inside the building here. We're going to set you in the briefing room, just kind of how the airplane works, what it's going to be like to get in the seat, and then some of the things that you'll need to know to enjoy your flight. What made you want to do this? My, my family, I come from a background of, of military, and my mom and my dad was in the military, and 
I've always wanted to fly in a, in a plane this fast. But really? Yeah. Right. So, once you get up in the jet, this is what it's going to look like. And then this right here is the most important one. The G? G forces. You got negative Gs, zero G, positive Gs. So you're going to be pulling a lot of positive Gs today. Right, right. So this aircraft is capable of pulling 7.5 Gs. That's seven and a half times force of gravity. Oh, wow. What it's doing is it's pulling the blood from your head, and it's starting to make you want to pass out. Okay. So if you're going to pull a high G, there's a breathing portion, and the nickname for that is called the Hick Maneuver. It's going to sound like this. You're going to take no breath in. Hold that for five seconds. And you hold it in your chest. Mm -hmm. Ready, hit it. I'm, I need all of it. Uh, I'm gonna take like seven of them, bro. Oh man, I'm gonna just be hicking, bro. He gonna be like, you good? Man, I can't wait, man. Right now, I feel pretty good. Uh, he just got me right with a, couple, with a couple tips, and I don't know, I'm just eager to get inside and see how it's gonna feel. Am I going up? Yeah, you can I'm pop up. right up, just sit right back in the back seat. So jacked, <laughs> This is your, uh, your mic. Just watch your arms there. Go. All our other takeoff decks are looking good. We're going to taxi to the other runway and uh, we'll be taking off here in a moment. You ready to go? Yeah. All right, ready, hit it. Oh! Thanks for coming with us. We appreciate it. Everything was so amazing. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chewy helped me out with everything seven. You know, just kind of your mind off of things and uh, kind of relax and, you know, get out and do some things that are fun and not just all about business sometimes. Because in our work area, it is all about business. But sometimes it's good to just get out and fly planes, I guess. Man, it's exciting stuff. <laughs> now, for a few years now, excitement for training camp was only matched by excitement for Anthony Sherman's arrival. And this summer, the fullback was sure he had every fan's engine revving for the new season. Love you. Thank you. Uh, bad butt. Nice work. Go ahead, butt. Nice work, too. You want to take As the Pro Bowl fullback says goodbye for the next three and a half right. weeks, the man they call the sausage has earned the reputation of being a workhorse within one of the most potent offenses in the NFL. Bye. However, with each new season comes new opportunity. And for the past four years, the anticipation for the start of training camp has been Sherman's time to shine. St. Joseph uh, begin. There is a gauntlet at the doors to the dorm in St. Joe right now. Every year it's gotten bigger and bigger and now Everyone's anticipating how I'm going to come to camp. Uh, my first year, I wore a cutoff sleeve shirt that said, come get some, and some jean shorts and work boots. And then people were like, oh, that's really funny. Like, did you think about like how you're going to dress up? I'm like, no, but maybe I should. Is this the best outfit you've ever had for training camp? Well, I definitely, I have to live up to every year. So now I definitely have a little more stress to just come. I think the first year I was like, your overalls are pretty tight. And then I just think I get nervous every year since, like hoping that everyone's really going to enjoy it. You know, at the start of camp, all the guys a little stressed out, like three weeks of, you know, tough football. So I think it was just something that he could do to make everyone laugh. Are you oh, I'm extremely excited. I mean, Brett Veach has done a phenomenal job. I had thought, you know, I did the 
I did the pace car a few years ago, and, and I love NASCAR, and was like, you know, it would be funny if I just wore a fire suit with uh, a helmet and everything. And, and then I said, I think you're going to need to get something to make it a little bit better than last year, because everyone's like, how are you going to beat last year? And I was like, maybe if you get a race car. Uh, what are we thinking for uh, the park it over there? Obviously, the gears, what do they, what does have with clutch-wise? It's already, the ignition's already on. Okay. Uh, I'm going to push down the... I asked Boyer if he had a car that I could borrow, and then he got the custom fire suit and helmet and everything else for me, so he took care of the rest. Uh, well, we got a lot of young, young speedsters on the uh, the offense, and uh, I'm an old head now, so the only way I'm going to keep up with these young kids is uh, riding this NASCAR. EB, I was going to call you and tell you to make sure you're out front, but I figured you'd already know. You can send it to everyone. It's custom. Look it, look it. And when we come back, we'll check in on the enemy, the Pittsburgh Steelers. KC Blitz will be right back. Welcome back to the Blitz. The Kansas City Chiefs on the road in Pittsburgh to play the Steelers. Now, Pittsburgh still has Ben Roethlisberger at quarterback, but receiver Antonio Brown and running back Le'Veon Bell, well, they're causing headaches for other teams now. This will be the second straight home preseason game for the Steelers. They beat the Bucks 30-28 last week. Big Ben may be back, but he ain't playing tonight. 
Mike Tomlin will keep him healthy on the sidelines. Mason Rudolph will get the start. He'll be throwing to Juju Smith Schuster at the receiver. James Connors, your feature tailback. Defensively, the big addition is first round draft choice Devin Bush, a linebacker out of Michigan. And he's learning how to be the latest member of the Steel Curtain. Also putting pressure on Chiefs Patrick Mahomes will be linebacker TJ Watt. He's JJ's little brother. Had 13 sacks and six forced fumbles a year ago. Should be a good game. And that's going to wrap it up for our pregame show for Matt. I'm Dan. We'll see you next week. Now to Heinz Field.